Hi. Today I'm going to do case problem one from chapter four of Jeffrey Cam and others business analytics book. I use this book in my teaching at Pittsburgh Technical College in my business intelligence class. Um, today, halfway through my lecture, our Zoom session died. I didn't know this and I need to finish my lecture, so I'm recording the problem. I encourage you to check out Mr. Cam's book. This is an excellent book. So let's take a look at the problem I'm going to do. As I said, it's going to be case problem one from chapter four. In this scenario, the newspaper in Hamilton County was trying to do a evaluation or ranking of Hamilton County judges. Ranking people that do different amounts of work is a very difficult thing to do. And the statistics provided allow us to come up with some arbitrary and some objective ways to evaluate them. So what we have here is we have some data. I don't know if these judges are real or made up. I'm just going with the data. Um, Judge Cardellano last year did 3,000 some cases. 137 were repealed and 12 were reversed. Likewise, Judge Crush, 3,372, 119 cases and 10 reversed. The question becomes, what's a good appeal rate? What's a low appeal rate? What's a good reverse rate? And just looking at these numbers, it's hard to say. I mean, you could argue that, holy cow, you know, Judge Kraft at 127, whereas Judge Dinkelacker only at 44. But, you know, Dinkelacker had half the number of cases as as um, Kraft. So is that good, bad? We don't know. So we're going to use some stats here. I put this together in a simple little Excel document. And I misspelled Arthur's name here. Sorry, Judge Nay. So I need to figure out the probabilities of a case being appealed and the probabilities of a case being reversed. Now, this is simple probability. You know, Judge Tracy had 3,100 cases, 127 were appealed. The probability of a case being appealed in front of Judge Tracy is the appeal divided by the cases. So I'm going to do a probability of appeal. I'm also the probability of reverse. And that's where I'm going to start. Okay, so both of these are straightforward. The number of appeals divided by the number of cases. Center. Let's fill it down. And I'm going to carry it down to the total as well. If it'll let me. Set some decimal places that are realistic. Three decimal places. So Judge Tracy is a .04. Arthur Nay is just under her at 0.039. Judge Cardellano, 0.045. We have some numbers. Probability reverse, same thing. 13. Divided by number of cases. Fill down. Set some formats. So I set all these to three decimal places. So that's part of the question. The next part of the question is, what's the chance of a reversal given an appeal? Now, from my understanding of the legal system, is cases are only reversed if they're appealed. I'm going to ignore special scenarios where a case gets thrown out after new evidence came up. I don't know how it works. I'm assuming that a case can only get reversed on appeal. So this is the probability of... Reversal given appeal, which is the probability of reversal and repeal or intersect repeal over the probability of appeal. That's your basic conditional probability formula. So I'm going to make the statement that this number is reverse intersect appeal. Okay. So the probability of reverse given appeal. I'm going to say that's equal to, which is my definition of reverse intersect appeal. Appeal. Bam. Throw down. All right. So these are the percentages or the probabilities. Excuse me. Don't say percentages. 
So now we have some numbers. Now let's rank these judges. I'm going to rank these judges in all three of these values. And then I'm going to create an overall ranking system. And then I'll use conditional formatting to make this table really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to insert a column after each one of these. I'm going to do appeal rank. Oops. Reverse rank. And P R given A rank. What I'll do here is I'll say that, and I'm making the statements out of ignorance, a lower appeal rate is better than a higher appeal rate. I would say. You know, as a judge, I would hate to have my cases come back in front of me. I would want that boom. Once I hit that gavel, it's done and it moves on. And I'm sure as a defendant, I might want that as well. So I'm going to sort these. I'm going to use the sort and filter. I'm going to do a custom sort. And I'm going to sort based on probability of appeal. And I'll sort from smallest to largest. Now, I just made a mistake. See how I've included total there? I can't do that. So I'm going to re-highlight. In fact, it's not a good bad idea to highlight the data. So I named it. So I'll sort and filter. Custom sort. Probability of appeal, smallest to largest. Based on this, Judge Winker has the lowest probability of appeal. So, one, two. Fill down. Set some decimal places. So, if we're just ranking on appeal alone, Winker's number one, Judge Hogan's number two, Judge Dinkelacker's number three. I'm going to do the same thing for reverse rank and repeal or reverse given appeal. Highlight my data. Make sure you get all the columns. Ignore the total. Sort and filter. Custom sort. This time I'll do it by probability of reversal. One, two. Highlight down. There are other ways to fill that. That's just my preferred way. So once again, Judge Winker's number one. This time, Judge Neuer, if I'm pronouncing that, is number two. Judge Kraft is number three. And Dinkelacker, wow, he dropped way down to 12. And then I'll do the same thing over here. That doesn't look like I did that right. Let me try this again. Yeah, I did the wrong thing. I want the probability, not the rankings. There's nothing there yet. One, two, fill. Outstanding. So now we have ranked these judges on three categories. Probability of appeal, probability of reversal, and probability of reversal given appeal. So now let's rank the judges overall. What I'm going to do is I'm going to average these three values for each judge, and then I'll rank them based on the average. Inserting two columns here, because I'll need two eventually, and I'll get rid of one. So I have average rank. Now, put it here at the beginning because we want to see that stuff. So, my average rank is equal to average of appeal rank, comma, reverse rank, comma, rank given, or reverse given appeal. Let's fill it down. Now, these are all whole numbers, so we're going to get a lot of repetitions. Like we see, you have a couple eights here. So it's not a bad idea to add a decimal place here. So I get some distinction. Even that, Judge Cardellano and Judge O'Connor, they're right neck and neck. So maybe add a second decimal place. Just so that I can... Oh, jeez, oh man. Cardellano and O'Connor, they're basically the same person.
Okay, so I'm going to highlight again, custom sorts, average rank, and I have two ties. So I'm going to do one and two. Highlight down to here. So f D Judge Cardolano and Judge O'Connor. We're going to tie them at eight. Um, likewise, Judge Nato and Judge Matthews were tied at 13th. And put Sunderman down there at 14th. You can do that with Excel. I have seven or 16 judges. It wasn't too bad doing that by hand. I could now leave the average rank in or take it out. It's your call. I'm going to hide it. All right, excellent. So we now have a good ranking system. If you want to sort these alphabetically to avoid stigma, it's a really good idea. We know where these judges rank. All right, so that has solved much of the problem. Uh, the problem in the book that the author has given us has three sets of judges. The math's the same across them. There are a couple other questions that the book asks. I don't want to do them all here. Um, because, you know, it's not fair for me to do all of the assignments. But I want to add something to this that the book doesn't. Um, I want to play around with some Excel games. I want to make this stuff stand out. So take a look at this probability of appeal. I want it to jump out as to who's good, who's bad, you know, etc. And a way to do that is to use conditional formatting. So I'm going to set up a conditional format that gives me a green, yellow, red scenario. Green would be good, yellow would be okay, red would be bad. I'm going to base it on this total here. So I'm going to say that this is my midpoint. And I just totally arbitrarily pick that number. I could pick some other number. I could say 20% is my midpoint, and anybody that's above that is bad. Um, I've had worked in jobs where if 20% of my students don't like me, I'm bad. Um, I'm not going to go that. I'm going to go with compared to the average, the aggregate. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to come here to conditional formatting. And I, these are all really cool. I'm going to create a new rule. I'm going to build a three color scale. I'm going to set my lowest value to be green because green is good in my culture. I'm going to set the highest value to be red because red is bad in my culture. Now we see how we get a nice gradient scale going here. The middle is yellow, so we get, you know, green is good, yellow is okay, orange starts to become bad. By default, it gives me a percentile, which is fine. Everybody above 50% is bad. Everybody below the 50 percentile is good. I'm going to set that to a number and set that number to be the value of calculators. Now, I did that just because I chose to do that. You know, I want to see people that are better than average or worse than average. This is a good way to pull that off. I could, again, like I said, specify a number there, but I chose to do something a little mathematics. Click OK. Bam. I can visually see the good, the bad, and the ugly here. And it's real pretty if I sort this by probability of appeal. You can see how it gradients down. And Judge Sunderman needs some work. Something's going on with Sunderman if he's got that big of appeal process. Ruhlman, Cardolano, etc. You can see how they get closer to, to yellow. All these guys right here that are exactly at my number are yellow. They're okay. These are the good ones. I'll do the same thing for reverse. I'll do the same thing for appeal. Additional formatting. New rule. Three color scale. I found if I copy this particular format, it doesn't work so well. So I'll just rebuild it. Boom. Conditional formatting.
I'm such a program. I keep thinking red green refactor. All right, so we can visually see who's what. Excel offers lots of cool tricks with these conditional formatting. You can set, you can highlight all those numbers that are above the value, below the value. All right, so this is, as mentioned, this is case problem number one from chapter four of Jeffrey Cam and others business analytics book. Um, Good luck to you. Thank you for watching. Be safe.